What's up current and future disc golf addicts? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking you along with me on a round at Sprinkle Valley Disc Golf Course, which was most notably the location for the USWDGC in 2024. And so this is the most famous course, at least that we played during our Austin trip here, especially with the recency of the tournament that was played here a month, month and a half before we ended up playing this round. Hole 1 was a lot more downhill than I would have initially expected and didn't really push that right side as much as I would have liked. And I was feeling a little bit optimistic trying to cut the corner with the thumber and you can see the spot that I ended up landing in which was uh, just proof that maybe I should have just played smart but <laughs> end up getting away with a sidearm throw in with my Globerg somehow saving my par and then not being punished as I probably should have been for that thumber. Hole 2, we have a relatively open fairway at least to begin with, and which was proving to be surprisingly fair, but then it tightens down here towards the basket. At this point, we still couldn't see the basket on hole 2, because what is different uh, than what you would have probably seen on Joma's coverage for the USWDGC is that they actually play to the A pin positions on most of these, and these have been moved a little bit back to the B pin positions almost across the board for the entire course for the holes at least that have uh, multiple pin positions and so that also means that distances are slightly off on these uh, hole maps that you're seeing on the previews but the what I found was that the basket positions themselves there weren't too many uh, differences at least on the part threes to where you might have it be an extra 45 feet or so but on the par 4s, some of them actually did make a difference, uh, as you would have probably seen on hole 2. Hole 4, one of the holes that doesn't have multiple pin positions, and was one of the more difficult uh, holes, especially with this ever so slight left to right shape. And there was really this ditch and uh, bridge that you crossed over, that was the mark of like having a good drive that I had barely, uh, barely crossed there. And I'm just trying to pitch up. Maybe give it a little bit of a nose up floater bit and see see if I can make some magic happen. But most importantly, keeping it close. Hole 5 was one of the shorter par 4s, which off the tee shot, as you can see, very tight, specific, pick your gap. And I end up throwing my straight Thunderbird on a sidearm, and I honestly could not have done it any better. It, as long as you get that first initial shot off the tee clean, this hole becomes a piece of cake and then you just pick your gap really where you're throwing and then ideally cash in your birdie like I was doing here. So off to a pretty good start, getting away scotch free on the first few holes, having to craft some pars and uh, even managing to get myself under par. This hole was, uh, at least what I remember seeing on the coverage from the women playing, was that it was this really clear left to right shaping fairway, but actually stepping up to this hole in person, it was a lot straighter of a hole than I would have imagined, and I tried kind of cheating my way, throwing a straight sidearm, but ended up hitting the bushes early, just early releasing it a little bit. Hole 7, as you might see from the map, it looks like there's tons of options, but standing on the tee, it was hard to find one that you would have any confidence in in hitting. And so it's really pick your poison there. And then the second shot has a much more clear, defined fairway where we're fading off to the left. And with where I was, I was just trying to jump put this up for an easy par and then move on. Unfortunately, I had different plans though here and ended up hitting high left and these baskets do not like that whatsoever. And so I ended up taking a really, really unfortunate bogey there. Hole 8 shapes up perfectly for my sidearm justice. Trying to put it on a touch of Anheuser, 
came out maybe a little bit closer to flat, but ended up landing inside the circle, which was great, and then capitalizing on that birdie. Hole 9, another really short uh, par 4, but this tee shot was very different looking back at it now than you might initially suspect, where the shape seemed to be perfect for that sweeping hyzer, but with the trees on the outside that I ended up hitting there, and the way that the inside corner shapes actually wasn't great for that shot shape. And so if I could actually go back, that straighter shot would play so much nicer. And then uh, lots of unforced errors happening here, which currently also the shot that I probably struggle with the most are these uh, pan pending Anheusers where you want it to drift all the way to the right. I'm just trying to shape it down the fairway. But as you can see, really struggling there. And at this point, this is going to be a high number. I'm just trying to pitch up. But this one actually leaking outside the circle too. In the slightly uphill windy green. And at this point, it was just so hard to focus in on that putt. Hole 10. Uh, only coming in at 290 feet. But this one, surprisingly a lot more downhill than you would initially suspect. And uh, I end up leaking my justice just a little bit too high and fading out to the right. Thinking the putt was perfect, but just narrowly hitting the band and then leaving myself with a tap in the par. Hole 11. This is the field hole where on the approach, there was that big open field where you're throwing that big backhand hyzer approach into. So important to get into a good position off the tee and then you have a couple of different options then on the approach but I was really struggling here to find that fairway pitching up to the corner was my third shot meaning I'm throwing four now and at this point I still have hole nine in the back of my mind as much as I would like to forget about what had happened still fairly fresh in my mind and then that's still weighing in a little bit and again looking like a, a big number coming up here and then again just narrowly missing that putt where these baskets just do not like that left side hole 12 was a perfectly straight shot if you have the control you could get a little bit of left to right movement I'm just trying to throw straight fairway here and end up landing just at the corner. Fortunately, these vines that you do see were in the way of my putt, forcing forcing this pitchy hyzer putt. And uh, hoping for the best, but no luck there. Hole 13, a very interesting hole actually with how it shapes up to where it's a clearly defined two shot hole, where the first shot you have to move off to the left, essentially going away from the basket and then you have to cut back across and then to the right. I end up landing a little short left and again trying to cheat a little bit, trying to throw a straight pushing sidearm with the mistake being to leak off to the right then with the space that was there. And then again, just a long jumper, getting up for par, not really even trying to run it or not that I could even run it from that range to where I don't have that trust in my trusting control in my jump putt. Hole 14, unfortunately there was a, a little bit of a technical issue here with my camera, but 280 foot straight shot, ended up leaking right, had a 50 footer, take a par and move on then to the next yeah, hole. Yeah. This hole again, one of those uh, pick your poison, tons of options off the tee, none of which seem really great. And on the second shot here, this was a, a blind approach. And I wish I actually would have gone up the fairway, but uh, the basket ended up being far further left than I would have initially thought. And I was trying to throw a distance driver on a skip shot. But if I could go back, this would have been much, much better to play something of a fairway a little bit more overstable. And at this point, I'm just trying to get by, tried throwing in my Berg there, put a lot of speed on it too and went long. 
trying to miraculously save my par and then with that unfortunate spit out actually taking a double bogey with the scores just adding up really quick hole 16 a very open hole especially compared to some of the previous ones we're looking at but also a lot more windy because of that tee shot you really just want to get out the gap and then the further right you go the easier it is to then approach the basket but you have to keep in mind that the tall grass is also OB off to the right and then I throw a big spike kaiser approach to the basket with my wraith I end up getting really lucky and actually skipping down the fairway I'm not sure how much you can see that on camera and then cashing in my just inside circle one putt hole 17 is an island hole as you can see also the camera being moved around with how much wind there was on this and uh, I ended up actually getting the distance surprisingly good on that but just didn't really commit to that far enough right line I figured that the wind would actually push down my hyzer and then uh, try try account for that wind which is why I tried aiming a little bit more left but it ended up having almost no effect really on my disc and then uh, just missing way left of the island hole 18 a beast of a finishing hole with a ton of OB and then uh, off the tee shot no real challenge you really just want to put yourself in a good spot and then the second shot you want this pushing backhand hyzer and then at this point I figured I was actually in a decent spot to try go up for the birdie but end up tugging that sidearm off to the left side really fortunate to not go OB because the OB approaching the basket within the last couple hundred feet is surprisingly tight and can find a lot of extra strokes there so I was actually really fortunate and then my approach was just really poor there leaving myself with a log putt that I missed low but that's it for Sprinkle Valley and what it looks like when an amateur plays it if you enjoyed what you saw don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe for more content thanks for watching